Hello and welcome to Center Ice Card Cast, your one-stop podcast shop for all things hockey cards. My name is Eric Andrews, also known in the hobby as Hammerhawks, and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow hobbyist Aaron Goldstein, better known as Crease Collector. And also joining us for the episode is the one and only Dr. Brian Price of President's Choice Trading Cards. So this is an episode that we've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. And up front, I'll just say that this is 110% an episode that you guys will want to sit down and watch on YouTube so that you can see the cards that are being talked about throughout the episode. I've referenced this a few times, but back in the winter, I worked out a trio of deals to acquire a total of six significant cards for my collection. The deals were finalized and executed at various points, so the cards actually arrived at different times, but I've had all of them in my possession for a little while now and have just kind of been waiting for the right time to show them off. And I thought it would actually be a little bit sooner, but then we had a run of episodes that were you know, fairly timely with new releases and things like that, um, the expo, just things like that. So this episode kind of ended up getting pushed back to accommodate for those more timely episodes. And in typical fashion, Aaron does not know what any of these cards are. And I know that he's been extremely curious about what they are and has even made an attempt to guess what the big part of the mail day could be. Kind of funny, I later took advantage of that guest by playing an April Fool's joke on him, showing him a scan I found online of a really nice Wayne Gretzky OPG rookie card with an in-person autograph, which he totally fell for before I admitted that it was just a joke. So still to this minute, Aaron has no idea of what is in store for this episode, which as you guys know, that's kind of how I like doing things because it makes it more interesting. Now, some of you might be wondering why Dr. Price is joining us, which is a great question. Me that too. would be because all six of the cards that I'll be showing off were made by President's Choice. So I figured that having Dr. Price on to get his reactions and insights about the cards would be a really nice addition for the episode as well. And I'll be transparent and say that Dr. Price does already know about the first four of the six cards that will be shown, but the big grand finale part at the end will be a surprise for him as well, though he is obviously familiar with the cards since he made them. So with the context of all of this kind of having been established, let's jump on in and start out with, you know, the small part, um, which is three cards that were the last of the six to arrive. So the first part, the, the first three cards, all three of these came from a good hobby friend of mine, Ron, who some of you might know as Chuck Norris Fears Sid on some of the forums. He's a massive Eddie Jockman collector. Um, so just to give him a shout out right out of the gate. And ironically, this is actually the third deal that Ron and I have made for cards from the Vesna collection, as we made a deal where I acquired a, I think it was a Turk Broda trophy winner card from him that I then flipped to somebody else for a Glenn Hall one that I wanted for my collection, as well as the incredibly stunning Vesna art card that I have, as he was one of the lucky winners of the drawings for that card. And then uh, we worked out a deal in the aftermath for it. So... First up, again, starting quote unquote small at number six, even though it's a really quite a large card in terms of the piece on the card, as well as the magnitude of the card. So at number six, we have from the Vesna collection, a cloth variation base pad. Very nice. Yeah, you know, it's um, very few of them have that kind of a pattern in them. Very few. And I guess that's why you call it uh, an alteration because it is. I would say it's probably one of the nicer ones that I've seen. So, cards. yeah. So I just up front, I'm pretty strict with the Vesna cards that I acquire for my collection as I want each of them to have a very specific purpose for my collection. So for this one, I figured it would be nice to pick up a cloth copy to go along with the leather copy that my friend Tyler pulled in one of my Vesna collection boxes to, you know, quote unquote, kind of complete the pairing of materials that were used in the base pads for those that are unfamiliar for the base pads and for the trophy winner cards, for that matter, from Vesna collection, one of the five copies of each card featured a cloth piece instead of leather. So getting a cloth piece on these cards is fairly difficult to do as in total, there are only nine of the cloth base pads compared to 36 total different leather copies of the card. So, you know, there, there's nine different cards, five copies of each, but within those five, only one is cloth. So getting the cloth ones is fairly difficult to do. And, you know, when I had the chance to get this one from Ron, it, you know, it just kind of made sense and was something that I wanted to, to make sure that I picked up. This next one, unless there's anything else you guys want to add. It'd be that. kind of interesting to know if anyone, well, I guess not too many people could do it. How many people have more than one of the cloth cards, you know, are there nine different collectors out there with one each or, 
cards. The, the most intense collector want to try and get all nine, which he won't because you're keeping one of them for sure. So, it's right, kind of interesting. And the, you know, doing the cloth being the inside inside of the pad part that went against his leg there were a lot of people who were talking to me in the early stages about well i'd rather get leather than cloth i think that changed when we did the the different numbers Mm. a lot yeah that's that's a good point i mean it added that desirability to the cloth cards for sure that's definitely very true very true for sure well that's Um, the least if that's the least of the six cards we're in for a show Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, I was just thinking the same thing. Like if that's the worst, the, the, the quote unquote worst there is here, then I mean, I think we're in for quite the show. Awesome card, obviously. Um, and just it, it really speaks to, again, the design of the Vesna collection. You know, it's it's um, one of many that we've seen, of course, shared. But um, again, just seeing that design up close, just super cool. Like really nice. Yeah, absolutely. I love the design as well with the the forum doors in the background and everything just makes for a really cool card. So moving on to number five, and I'm actually going to defer largely to Dr. Price to explain what exactly the memorability piece is and what it was used for, for this specific card. Again, it's from the Vesna collection and it is a historical relics pulp board. Super nice. That's awesome. Again, like, uh, you know, I just mentioned, you know, uh, seeing cards from the Vesna collection and their design. And obviously again, another awesome showing here so very very cool it's always uh, it's always interesting to see the different parts of the pad and again it's another just fabulous example i don't remember if uh if i did this online or where i did it but we um before we took the 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 pad totally apart we sort of stripped it down and pulled off the front and pulled off the back and exposed how the horsehair was holding everything together and the the, the pulp board was like little strips that ran through it. And then you had the kings as well. So that's basically, it's, it's, this was the structure of the pad with the, you know, it's, it gave it, it gave it its form. And then it was sort of, like I said, held in the, the thickness was created by the, by the horsehair. And uh, we, before we actually named it pulp board, we had a little bit of work to do in terms of doing a lot of research as to the 1920s and 1930s different pads. And we got that information that that's exactly what it was, Paul Port. Very cool. Yeah, I remember you saying that it took quite a while to figure out what exactly the the pulp board was and and the cane. What was the cane? And the cane actually, mm-hmm. my recollection, and I don't know if you have a cane card coming, but if you do, uh, it was used in um, in cricket uh, gloves and cricket. That's gloves. right. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we found out that the cane was used in the hockey one. So it's again very very interesting. I don't know. I think. A lot of this stuff didn't change until the close to the 50s. Hmm. We started making the pads a little differently. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I know that you've obviously researched the stuff quite a bit more than pretty much anybody else has. Well, you so. know what I figured I had to do is I had to strip the, the pad and sort of show the layers before I took it apart because I couldn't put it back together again. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we got some pretty good pictures of it. And uh, we, I don't, can't re- recall where we displayed them, but I know that we did display them. So people could understand what they're getting out of this. Yeah, absolutely. And then moving on to the final card that came from Ron. Um, Again, the the first three cards all came in the same deal from Ron. I'm trying to do something for Ron right now. We're looking through, uh, trying to get him something from our uh, original uh, Jackman glove. Nice. I'm sure he'll enjoy that, especially when he misses. If I find it. If I find it, we're looking through it. Big if, but I'm sure either way, like just the effort is, uh, I'm sure appreciated. And the final card from the deal with Ron, which comes in at number four on the countdown, again, which just speaks to the quality of what is still coming if this is number four. Again, from the Vesna collection, a historical relic strap. Is that a pockmark on like right in the middle of the strap there? You know what? It it could be, you know, remember the strap went around the front and then around the back. That's the thing, right? And and it it could be. Even straps on the back and still get puck marks. Like even today, like like on some of my gear, you'll randomly see puck marks on the straps. Well, remember it's though, when so he weird. played, he played that puck wasn't flying the same way it's flying today. That's True. a good point. There were a lot of rules that goalies couldn't go down and things like that, all to do with the fact that you know the pucks weren't leaving the ice very very high off the ice at that time. But yeah. it is possible. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, super cool. Either way, I mean, just just having a mark there. I mean, you know, it did its purpose. You know, it's it's getting us to talk about this card. It's getting us to talk about, you know, what that could have been from back in the day, right? So, just a lot of history tied up in these cards. 
and just, uh, you know, another good example of that right there. Yeah, I ever since I got the card in hand, I always was kind of curious what that mark was. I mean, it's clearly some, you know, scratch or something of some sort. So I don't know, you know puck or I don't know if it could have been from one of the buckles or, you know, who, who knows what it might be. Yeah, I mean, again, he could have laid the pads down on the floor of the dressing room in the forum, and uh, that's wetness from whoever. So you can you can almost choose whatever you like to say about it because <laughs> how would anyone know, know any different? It's true, true, very true. Yeah, but it definitely it has, it has it has more of a pattern in it than I would think a puck would make, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely very interesting, and I don't know that. You know, like you said, there's really ever a way to know, but like Aaron said, it's getting us talking about it and it definitely adds yeah, something exactly. unique I would, to the I card. I certainly would rather have this card with a, with a strap that has that mark on it than having one that has no marks on it. There's no oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, yeah, like, the pieces that have the, the holes on them are really cool as well, but yeah. having... Now, you, know, you know what's tremendously interesting to me is, 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 is how you got these cards how the community works together to get guys what they want. Now, I know you made a deal and he got something from you and, and, and whatever, whether it was other cards or financial remuneration. But the bottom line is it seems that the best group of people that aren't, you know, aren't the breakers or the, the rippers or all that are, are, is a community that you guys are involved in that somehow people find out, you make it known exactly what you're collecting and they get it to you. And, and I've just seen so many of the guys, you know them all, and I just think it's it's just it's just fabulous to watch that watch how that proceeds as because it still is a hobby even though the percentage of, of people in our industry is smaller and smaller but there still is a hobby there and it's a great hobby and this just shows that you know you were able to and these these cards weren't easy or inexpensive to get I know that we all know that but you got them and that's great you got three from Ron and that's that's terrific. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly exceptionally grateful to him being able to work it out with me to get me these cards into my collection meant a lot that he was willing to wait for me to raise the funding needed to secure yep. the cards. Yep. You know, I, I know he was getting a little antsy toward the end, but certainly appreciate his patience and doing what it took to get the deal done. And obviously very grateful to have the cards in my collection. A little bit more specifically about the strap card. This one is kind of special compared to some of the other historical relic cards from the Vesna collection because it's one of the, you know, quote unquote, short print materials, as there were only four different copies of the strap produced, whereas most of the historical relics had nine different copies. The other short prints being the loop, which is also four copies. And I was fortunate enough to pull one of those in one of my boxes. Of course, the buckle, which had two copies. And then there was also the complete pad which had a total of seven copies. So, you know, definitely significant just in the material itself, but also the fact that it is one of those rare, quote unquote, short print historical relics as well. And like I said, every Vesna card that I acquire from my collection has a very specific purpose. So with these two historical relic cards and being able to acquire them, I, I made the decision to attempt completing the full historical relic set minus the buckle, unfortunately, since both of those are, are very firmly spoken for already. So just going for the other eight cards, but by acquiring these two from Ron, that puts me at having five of those eight non-buckle historical relic cards. As I already had the loop, like I mentioned, I also pulled a quad pad and then was fortunate enough to get one of the complete pads as well. So over halfway and, uh, you know, that'll be something fun to work on. And Certainly won't be easy, especially this far after the release. It would have been tough even at release, but quote unquote, starting to try doing that this far after is certainly not going to be easy, but something that I'm looking forward to, to hopefully completing one day. Well, if there's, if the buckle card is something you need, at least the easy part about it is the people who have it know who wants it. True. So if, if their position ever changes, they know where to go. Very true. So I think that wraps up the first part, quote unquote, of the quote unquote mail day, as I call it, even though, like I said, it was three different deals. So moving on to the second part of the mail day. And again, this comes in at number three on the countdown, though this was actually the cheapest of the six cards, just a card that is really special to me. And I think, you know, it is just really, really cool. And I think that, you know, I, I know Dr. Price, you agree with that. And I know that Aaron will really enjoy this card. This was actually the lengthiest process of the six with the origins dating all the way back to last June. So I'm going to show the card first and then we can talk about it after just to not spoil it too much ahead of time. 
Like I said, Aaron, I know that you are going to really enjoy this card for pretty much everything that it is. So here it is and feel free to share your thoughts. Yo, oh, that's so cool. Vesna and Flurry, that is so nice. Weren't these like recently? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm made to order one. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, you know, I see what you did there. Very, very cool. That is awesome. And I love the Vesna piece there too. And uh, Flurry piece is awesome too. That's just, that's just wild. No comment. I'm not allowed to say anything <laughs> for, fear, for fear of getting 150 emails tomorrow. But this was a lot of fun. It was certainly Eric, all Eric's idea. And um, I had just uh, got the, the flurry stick. And so we chose that one. I, had, I still have remnants of the uh, round of the Pittsburgh stick. But this, uh, this was the, uh, I think it was, this, it was the Vegas one, correct? Yes, correct. And then so we, we, we tried to find a piece of the stick because it had to be that small that really had some graphics on it because, as you can guess, any of the other big letters, you, don't, you, you can't get to see what they are because it's just, just a small portion of them. And so we, got, we figured that one out. And then Eric added to the end, uh, asked if, he could, if I could find a piece of the, uh, of the leather that had the stitching. And we were fortunate enough, again, to be able to cut a small piece of what we have left uh, with that red stitching on. So just the two pieces of memorabilia are great. And then, of course, the whole idea was to, to add this as the next basically one available because it wasn't, wasn't in the original product. You know, it's kind of cool, uh, you know, to add on to that set, so to speak, you know, for, you know, a nice MTO there. So just awesome. All around. Yeah. So a little more context back when Flory won the Vesna trophy back in June of 2021, I quickly thought of the idea of having that card made using that design from the Vesna collection. And I remember I pitched the idea to you, Dr. Price, and you weren't super sure if you wanted to do it or not, just because it would be a one of one compared to, you know, the original cards being out of five. And that might rub some collectors the wrong way, which is totally understandable. So, you know, I just kind of was like, okay, you know, that makes sense. Move on. And then once I learned about solid gold and that it would again, have Vesna trophy winner cards, I pitched the idea to you again, since there would then be flurry trophy winner cards in solid gold. So if, if other collectors wanted a flurry Vesna trophy winner card, they could get one from solid gold. So because of that, you know, I think you came around to the idea. And after that, we kind of tossed around ideas for how to modify the original design to make it clear it wasn't from that original set. And you came up with the perfect solution, you know, by adjusting that Vesna collection graphic to incorporate the made to order line. And I think that was just the, the perfect way to do it. And going off of that, this truly was a made to order in the truest sense. Like you said, Dr. Price, you you know, really allowed me to, you know, have a, a pretty significant part in building this card, um, which I know, you know, you might not admit, but I know that was frustrating for you at times, but you know what, it was fun. It, 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 it's frustrating because I, I'm trying to get you exactly what you want and you know, what's exactly what you want. And, and it's hard to a hundred percent articulate, but eventually I think we got exactly what we wanted. I greatly appreciate that you were willing to work with me to ensure that, you know, this card was exactly what I envisioned. And, you know, it certainly ended up being just that. That's why they're called made to order. They are made to order. You, you give the orders, we try and do it as best <laughs> we can. Very true. But I was able to choose the photos and, you know, like you said, was able to, to pick the exact flurry stick piece. You know, like you said, you just purchased it and that stick was untouched at that point. You sent me a few photos of different options and, you know, once I saw that grip graphic, I, I just knew that was exactly the piece. If it fit, you know, we weren't sure at first if it was going to fit. So then you had to go back and, you know, find the uh, die cut template and see if it would fit. And, you know, as we see it, it did, and it just worked out perfectly. That graphic is actually right near where he held the stick. So hence the grip part. So just kind of even cool. It's not just a, a random part of the stick. It's very close to where he actually held it. So if you look in photos of him playing with Vegas and you look closely at the stick, you'll probably be able to pick out that part of the stick, which is pretty cool. You know, and like we said, you know, I, I can't take credit for everything here because, you know, I, I asked you to pick out that Vesna pad piece, you know, requesting the stitching in some wear or some unique feature. And needless to say, you absolutely knocked it out of the park. And then some with that piece, you know, having two full rows of stitching plus remnants of a third row, and then the stitching holes, the fold in the leather, it, it's just a spectacular piece. 
And I glad you're happy with it. Yes, very much so. I didn't know what it was going to be ahead of time. So I didn't know what to expect and I wanted it to be a surprise. So then when I got the package and opened it up and saw that piece, I was just absolutely blown away. So, you know, needless to say, the card turned out just fantastic and uh, is quite the piece for both my Vesna and Flurry collections. And that's not at the top of the list. That's only number four or not actually going the other direction. Yep. Number three. Number three. Yep. Yeah. So finally, let's step things up a few notches for what I deem as the mail day. Now, again, there's still two cards left, and these are both from the same deal. They came from Mike, who some people might know better as Holy Voli on Hobby Insider. I know he's a good friend of yours, Dr. Price, and you know him pretty well. Mike and I have become hobby friends over the last couple of years, largely because of the Vesna collection and, and just kind of keeping in touch through that and talking about Vesna stuff here and there. I don't exactly remember how these two cards first came up in our discussions, But once I learned of them, I knew I wanted to add them to my collection, if at all possible, given the immense scarcity of the pieces. And of course, with these cards being textbook examples of the types of cards that Mike collects, it was very difficult to convince him to let them go. But after negotiating as far as the price and just kind of talking about our collecting standpoints and where we are in life and in the hobby, Mike finally agreed to let the cards go, which still to this day kind of slightly surprises me, but I am certainly glad he did. So this was the single largest transaction I've made in my time collecting, and I'll likely be perfectly satisfied if that remains the case. And I know that my wallet will be very happy about that as well. Needless to say, I think everyone will agree when they see these cards that these are what I would consider to be collection altering pieces. And having the opportunity to add them to my collection is just truly humbling. It's been really hard keeping them a surprise. Right now, the only people that know are myself and Mike. No one else knows. So it's been really hard to keep them a surprise. I got to tell you, he kept it a secret. He didn't tell me either. (laughs) So, And I have to tell you a funny story about Mike. I can always tell when I put something in the the Shopify store that's too too inexpensive. I didn't get a high enough price because it's bought immediately by Mike. Immediately. (laughs) So I said, oh my God, there's another one. Should have priced it a little bit higher. So he's a great guy and a great collector. I'm glad, I'm glad I, well, I can't wait to see what, what your deal was. Absolutely. That's really cool and, and fun to hear. I, I know he obviously has just a spectacular President's Choice collection. So that certainly sounds about right. But yeah, I'm very excited to share these with everyone. I've had them in hand for a few months at this point. So it's been really hard keeping them a surprise. I'm going to start with the card that I think is cooler I kind of break them down into the, the category of cool and unique. And I think that I actually like this one better than the number one card. That said, I think the number one card is the more significant card. And I know that Dr. Price would agree with that. So that's why I'm starting with the, the cooler card at number two. And um, again, so as to not spoil it, I'll show the card and then we can unpack what exactly the card is after the fact. So coming in at number two, Dang, that's awesome. The legs is, wow, that is super cool. I don't even know if I've seen that card before. Like, yeah. I know that Mike always we did was that awesome, a really long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. It like, actually, I think the first, almost the first year of President's Choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, it's I don't even think I saw him show that off. It's amazing. Yeah, it was done in 2017. So it was right at the beginning of President's it, Choice. It caught me by surprise. <laughs> I haven't seen that for a long time. Yeah, it's just an absolutely spectacular card. Um, It's honestly one of the few cards that I have seen or owned that has kind of left me speechless. This, to the best of my knowledge, uh, this card was part of a full, quote unquote, mini set of made to order lace them up cards that you made for Mike's collection. And this was obviously the centerpiece of that set. I would say, I mean, we do have a, we, we did have a bunch of, older skates that were, I mean, really significant players, but none like this. Yeah. And, you know, I think they were all Montreal Canadiens legends too. So it kind of, you know, it it was quite the set from my understanding. You know, the thing that really stands out to me is, and you might know and be able to speak to this better than, than myself. So if I'm wrong and you know that, please feel free to share. But to my knowledge, there are only three cards out there that feature Vesna Skate Lace pieces. And the other two were part of your Solitaire product. And those both featured fairly small, like half inch pieces. Yeah. So to have as much intact lace on this card as there is, is just truly incredible. You know, obviously with them being leather and just being 
extremely delicate. Uh, you know, that kind of explains why there's so few cards that feature the laces. They've broken or disintegrated over the years. So it's just a fascinating card. And you know, I think that the design really plays into what the card is. And, uh, you know, ever since I was lucky enough to, to be fast enough to buy one of the Ovechkin lace him up cards from the uh, President's Choice game used product at the beginning of last year. And ever since then, I've just thought that skate based cards were incredibly cool. So being able to have a Vesna one, which is truly a historic and one of a kind piece is honestly just hard to believe. And though it's very tough to say this, given the next card, as well as the Vesna buckle card that I have, this honestly might be my favorite card that I own just because of how straight up cool the card really is you shocked me with this one boy oh boy that's great what a great card and your feelings towards having Vezina had to be so severe or sincere both to speak to it to get mike to move this card that's great and again that's what i was talking about earlier before i even mentioned mike we were talking about ron and how great it was how guys put it together for, for the sake of the other and not necessarily for themselves. And I think that's just great. This is a perfect indication of that. It's fabulous. Congratulations to both of you for doing that transaction. Now, is Mike involved in the in this in number one as well? That's yeah. what I would like to know. So okay. I think you must have had a gun. <laughs> there's, <you got laughs> yeah, two. there's no way that you get Mike Ooh. to move that type and of move. Something else. That is something better. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Like that type of move. Yeah, I mean. Awesome. <laughs> I'll yeah, say it, it, it. Yeah. Like I'll say it in advance. Just awesome. I know in our conversations that we had been talking about different types of Vesna memorabilia and somehow I think I might've asked like, Oh, like whatever happened with the skate races? Like, is that a thing or did they just cease to exist and, you know, fell apart or, you know, never were with the skates when you got them or, you know, whatever it might be. And he said, Oh no, like I, I have a card that have, that has laces in it. I was like, really? Like, I've never heard of that. I've never seen one. I, that's really cool. Like, I'd love to see it. So he showed me. And then I think, you know, a, a few months later, the, the wheels kind of started turning and somehow got the deal done. So yeah, just a spectacular card. You know, like I said, I think it, it very well might be my favorite card. Or close to it. See number um, one. So yes, on to number one, the grand finale. And again, I will largely let the, the card speak for itself up front, and then we can unpack it afterward. But I will introduce the card by saying that when Dr. Price made this card and its nearly identical brother back in 2020, he showed the cards off on Hobby Insider before mailing them to the collectors who had purchased them. And when he did that, he said that they were, quote, the two best cards that I've ever made. So you might know what that means, Dr. Price, but for those who do not, I'll share the card with you guys, and then we can unpack what exactly this is. But without further ado, the grand finale of the mail day. Oh, geez. oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. Like I remember when uh, he got that card, and how uh, mind blown we are all are. Now it's in your collection. That is wild. That is wild. Super, super cool. You know that nail laid in the stick box for so long because we needed it to, to the, the way we do our sticks, we don't cut through the middle. We, all we do is slice off the surface. Now you can tell, obviously, when you, when you get one of our stick wrap cards, you can tell it's all colorful and blah, blah, blah. We don't go into the middle because I've always felt that the middle of a stick could be the a door handle. Or it could be the, a, you know, one of your dining room chairs. I'm, I've always stayed away from that stuff in the middle. That just, that just doesn't show that it's a stick. So in order to do the top half and the bottom half, in order to slice the sort of the veneer off to make his stick cards, we had to go in and, and that's when we discovered that basically the, the blade was put together with nails. There's nails running together in between the two pieces. And so they, we, we took them out naturally before somebody killed themselves and, uh, and they, ju they just laid in the box. And then all of a sudden I got the idea to do this. And um, I think there are two of them. Correct. I think there are two of them. And um, how did you get this one? <laughs> how did you turn that? That's really amazing. Took some convincing for sure, but you know. I, I just like I, you know, wow. I'm I'm speechless actually. <laughs> same, same. I mean, it's kind of hard to believe when like a card like that. Yeah, and the interesting thing is 
no one really has seen it. Nobody knows. Right, it. right. Uh, do and that's great. I, I don't. I don't mind that. Uh, I'm gonna. What? Gonna can't count the number of times I'm gonna ask people if I have any more of them. I don't. No more. <laughs> I'll answer that right now. But boy, oh boy, that's great. That's great. This was done way before the Vezina collection, correct? This was, I believe, like spring or summer of 2020. It was actually just about two years ago that yeah. you posted these on Hobby Insider before mailing them out. Wow. I know the other one, um, it's the same design. The only thing different is the photo used. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a one-on-one. Absolutely use a different photo. Yeah. Right, right. So the other one has the photo that you know most people think of when they think of Vesna from his rookie card. But yeah, otherwise they're they're the same. In my opinion, and you know, it's hard to debate this in a way, these are arguably the most unique cards ever made. I mean, you, you just don't see you know things what? like that. I, I I would hope so because you know we spent a lot of time. We're you know we're not the size of any anyone else. We spend a lot of time, you know, working on stuff like this. I, I would that would be great if they were, but I have to tell you that that now I know why number two is number two because that is that is a spectacular spectacular card really yeah absolutely and 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 not only that you know it, it's also incredibly significant historically you know like you said especially in terms of the innovation of the goalie stick you know how they built a goalie stick back in that era you know it, it's just you know being able to have a concrete piece of that innovative factor is very very cool and um you know like you said with there only being the two nails that were used in the stick this is the rarest type of Vesna memorabilia. You know there there might there. have been there, there might have been more. I could have thrown them out to be honest with you. I didn't see any significance to them until the numbers of pieces in the stick box was getting smaller and smaller. And I said, you know, these things are cool. So <laughs> I can't tell you if there was more than two when we cut the stick. I don't think so because I usually don't throw anything out. But you never you never can tell because as I said, I was only worried about those pieces at the beginning that my guy with his band and the saw wouldn't get stuck in a nail and would flip out and get him in the eye or whatever. So we just, we just made sure that we could get them out without losing too much of the stick. And, uh, and they just sat in the box for the longest time. Wow. Man, it's and just you know so what? cool. If you had asked me about them, other than mentioning the stick and the, uh, the, the nail and the stick, whatever, I, I, I don't know if I would even remember it until you showed it. I totally had forgotten about that. I didn't, I couldn't figure out what was going to be, better than that lace card but now i know that's cool yeah so i mean if there were more you know you know who knows but the fact that there's only two that are available you know makes it the the rarest type of vesna memorabilia out there depending on how much of the lace is available or you know the buckles the loops you know there's there's various stuff that's also quite rare but you know with just the two of them that are that are available it's it's as rare as it gets for his stuff you know so with that i'll finally share that one of my collecting goals is to have every single type of available Vesna memorabilia in my collection. So by landing both of these cards, you know, that obviously crosses off, you know, the two most difficult ones in one shot and, and makes that goal significantly easier to accomplish. By getting the nail, I have now completed both the pad and the stick materials and only need a few more of the skate materials to finish that as well. And while the remaining skate materials might not be super easy, the cloth canvas liner type of thing that was on the inside is fairly easy to find, but some of the other ones are a little tougher to find. Um, they're certainly nowhere near as difficult as the lace was. So I'm very optimistic that I'll be able to complete that goal. But again, I'll be, I'll be pretty patient and picky with the remaining pieces that I do pick up for my collection. But again, a massive thank you goes out to Mike for being able to let those cards go out of his collection. I know those were two really cornerstone cards of his collection. And, you know, just the fact that he was willing to work out a deal with me for those cards is you know, I'm, something. I'm actually surprised forgetting about a deal. I'm surprised he even showed them to you, <laughs> let alone told them to you. That's, that's, that's quite, that's my hat's off to him. That's good. True. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I still can't believe that I own these pieces. And, uh, you know, I, I'm quite confident to say that I will never have a better mail day than that mail day was. Um, I think it was back in March that I got the cards from him. But, um, you know, it, it's essentially impossible to top that. There are certainly cards that, you know, would sell for more money, like a Gretzky PSA 10 rookie card or something. But, you know, just in terms of the quality of what it is, it does not get any better you know, than, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, they just, 
I think it was Panini just had a LeBron uh, triple logo man card. Oh yeah. For millions of dollars. It what's, was crazy. What's the significance of three logo men like that for one from 2002, one from 2006 and one from 2012. I mean, it's, yeah. it's especially the fact that LeBron is probably wearing one or two jerseys every game. Mm-hmm. If not more, you know? <laughs> So I mean, here you got something from the 1920s that's I, I don't I don't get it, but that's the way it is. Like, yeah, yeah, I I really like how this card that you just showed Eric was was you know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but you know this card is like the true intersection of innovation when it comes to you know the goaltending position, but also the innovation when it comes to hockey cards as well. You know, it really just kind of hits those two points, you know, right on the head. And it just, well, it's we're, just we're totally both, awesome. Were both of you in the hobby in 2000? Not to the extent that I would know kind of what was going on then. You, you know? should have read the boards then. <laughs> right, right. I'm sure it was. Uh, Goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got roasted by you oh. know, the, the people who wanted it. We love the idea of the fact that. You know, here's something that could have been buried yeah. in his collection. They would have never seen it ever. Now they got a little piece of it. Yeah. They were they were silent. The other roasters were out there in full force. Of course, of course. You know, with the internet then and now, it's 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 often the same story sometimes. So yeah, I'm sure it wasn't too fun, but I think in the long run, you know, I can only speak for myself, but I think it was uh I think it was the right call. 100%. Well, you know, the other interesting thing is basically uh, now nowadays I put down when I'm buying memorabilia. I just finished it. We're doing a, an all a goalie set, and I and I acquired a lot of sticks and a lot of pads and a lot of gloves and a lot of jerseys. I basically, uh, when I answer who it is, uh, I say Brian Price, President's Choice. I want to give them the opportunity not to get fooled, and if they have any problems about selling whatever that piece of memorabilia is, don't sell it. I get by with just about you know. There's nothing in this product like a Vesna pad that I must have to make the product, so I could get by with a without a uh, Gustafson this or a uh, Vasilevsky that if I have to. So I just want everyone to know if they got a, if they got a problem, don't sell it. And believe me, that they're, they're few and far between when it comes to getting paid for their merchandise that they have on. But yeah. this, this, this one, this one I understood, this, you know, but this was way back when. And, you know, everyone said at the time I should have bought it and donated to the Hall of Fame. And I said, you know, the Hall of Fame could have got it. They had an opportunity to get it before I did. Right. And it was passed by the Hall of Fame. And so, anyways, it's spr- sprinkled down to an awful lot of people that get a, have a little piece of the rock and some other people who have great collections based on it. So I feel good about that decision. Yeah, absolutely. I know certainly many, many collectors are grateful to have the opportunity to have this stuff. And I'm certainly one of them. Yes, and basically, that's why we did Solid Gold, because we had people who couldn't afford to get involved in the Vezina collection. And so... What I did was get one, you know, put one card out of the three so that at least took the price of the Vezina card in that group down to another level. Some of the Vezina collectors from the Vezina collection collected those as well. And another whole group uh, got into collecting Vezina at a, at a price level which they could afford. So that was, that's it. And now we're down to the nitty gritty and what we have left. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's getting up yet. It's not, it's not empty. The drawer <laughs> is not empty. That's awesome. But so I got to tell you, these are six great, great cards. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, obviously. Congratulations to the the people that you work with as well. I think they they deserve a praise for, I I know they got paid or they got traded or whatever, but they still broke apart their smaller parts of their collection to, to put together a bigger one. I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly grateful to them for sure. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it's been hard holding off on, on sharing the greatest mail day ever, but uh, certainly. You know what? Let me ask you, you call it a mail day. Did he send it to you by in the mail? He did. We were nerve nerve wracking, nerve wracking, man. Nerve wracking. Yeah. Obviously, obviously super premium everything, but uh, yeah, we were both a little bit nervous, but it obviously worked out in the end. So. Yeah. I I have to tell you, if I have anything of that value that goes in the mail, I just bite my nails until it arrives because yep. I've heard horror stories, but thank goodness. That's great. Yeah. We were both certainly very much looking forward to when they arrived. So, yep. But yeah, there it is. My collection altering mail day. And 
as well as so four so other you, really nice uh, cars. If you post this, I can then talk to Mike because it's going to be public public knowledge. True. Yep. He knows that uh, that we're recording tonight, so feel free to reach out to him after this if you want. He he knows. So because he deserves a pat on the back, I and I want to give it to him. That's yeah, great. yeah. I had put a a gag order on him to not spill the beans at all. So <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> so, yep. Cool. Well, I think uh, that's all that we have for you, Dr. Price, unless there's anything else that you'd want to share. No, no. I'm going to join you soon, though, as soon as I'm going to let uh, the uh, in the crease product out of the bag. It's, it's, it's getting close. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's getting I'll leave close. it at that. <laughs> Go for it. Guys, thanks again. It's always a pleasure. Thanks again, Brian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Like, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, like, I tried to buy more words. And plus, I wanted to give Brian a, a shot at talking about it. Um, he's kind of an expert, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I would say but, so. The book's still out on that. We'll see. But, <laughs> but no, he's, uh, I mean, just his insight again on the pad, you know, the building up the product, you know, his acquisition. I mean, we talked about this in length on other episodes, but just amazing. Yeah. So would you say that it was worth the wait to find out? Oh, what yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the final one I didn't know existed. But again, you know, it's, it's one of those cards. It might have not existed. You know, it might have been a ghost because... Those are the type of cards, you know, I forgot to mention it with Brian, but those are the type of cards, you know, when you create something like that, it's, it's one of those ones that if it does get released and if it does land in someone's collection, it, it's usually one of those ones that just stay there forever type things. And so the, the fact that it was moved, I think it caught Brian off guard too, that you kind of got to give the dealer a shout out on that one as well, you know, shout out to you dealers, you know, cause sometimes you deserve it. Right. So just moving a card like that is just uh it really is a once in a lifetime deal for a once in a lifetime card. So just awesome stuff all around. Yeah, no doubt about that. Those are absolutely once in a lifetime type of cards for sure. And like I said, very, very glad and excited to be able to share this with you guys. It's been something I've been looking forward to for quite a while. So yeah, just awesome to to share those. And, and like you said, you know, get Brian's reactions and insight on the stuff too, obviously makes it even more special. So shifting gears really quick, in case you missed episode 62, we opened up a box of 2122 Upper Deck Series 2 complements of Upper Deck. And as such, it's only fair to share some of those cards with our listeners. So we're going to do a giveaway and we'll pick one person to receive some of those Upper Deck Series 2 cards who shares with us which card shown in this episode is your favorite and why. And you can contact us on any of our social media accounts directly for that. And we'll also post about the contest as well. So you can respond that way if you prefer. Aaron, not that you'll be entered into the contest, but let's get the ball rolling with the theme of the contest. For you, which of those six cards is your favorite and why? Uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a cop out. You know, the one we just talked about, you know, the, you know, the card with the nail. I mean, just like I mentioned it earlier, you know, it's totally is a true intersection of innovation when it comes to, you know, the goaltending position, you know, gear, you know, obviously crafting what would become, you know, the goalie stick that we see today somewhat. And then, um, of course, the innovation of cards, you know, and, and the memorability that you can put in there or display on a card, you know, that is obviously something that hadn't been done. And yeah, it's just, it's just from every angle you look at it, it's just super cool and just a really nice innovative piece to your collection that just will stand the test of time. You know, it just, it seems so dramatic, but it's, it's, it's so true, you know, with a card like that. Absolutely. It, it's very difficult to, you know, pick a favorite between that one, the lace and the buckle, you know, you, you can make a case for any of the three of them for sure. So yeah, obviously the unique factor of the nail certainly speaks for itself too. And I know that even though the, the flurry trophy winner card isn't the most expensive or valuable or, you know, unique thing ever. Obviously that's certainly one that probably speaks to both of us as well. And, uh, you know, again, huge thank you to Dr. Price for working with me on that one. Cause there was a lot involved with that. And, you know, I, I do know that some of my requests were probably a little far-fetched and, you know, he was still willing to work with me to, to get it done. So just a, another quick shout out to him for that. But I think that will pretty much do it for this episode. Um, you know, like we've said, this is one we've looked forward to for a very long time for good reason. And, uh, you know, just very, very fun to share this stuff with you guys and share this with Aaron, too, because, you know, like I said, keeping this from you for this long has not been easy at all. Mike and I agreed to the deal back in November. So we're going on, you know, eight or nine months 
that I have managed to keep this a surprise from you. And there were times that I was tempted to spill the beans, but certainly made for a fun episode for sure. So I think that will do it for this episode. Of course, appreciate you guys for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know we sure did. Please be sure to follow us on social media. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Centerize Cardcast and on Twitter at Centerize CC. Please also be sure to subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to make sure you never miss a future episode. Until next time on Centerize Cardcast, keep collecting those hockey cards.